folks, Dave at Creative Craft House, to show you a puzzle whose basis was suggested by a Montessori group. I tried to take it a little farther and turn it into something that really offered uh, both learning opportunities and challenges for nearly every age. Uh, quite, a, quite a large puzzle. It's a little over 10 inches here and a little under 7 here, with the base being floorboard. So very rugged and nice heft and feel. Pieces are the B2 uh, contrasting woods. This one happens to be uh, cherry and maple. Now what we've got here are pieces that have uh, the unit dimension of one. Here's the one piece. Um, and here's the two piece. And one side, it, you'll see it has a grid. And the other side, it has the number. Now this continues from one to ten. For example, here is the ten piece, and you'll see a grid of ten. Now this puzzle um, essentially comes unsolved if your goal is to put all the pieces in the base because here is a home for the seven piece uh, and you'll notice if you count all the open unit squares you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So theoretically it is possible that this piece will fit in here and in fact it does uh, and in a number of ways. Not sure how many but uh, I'm sure I'll get one of my uh, computer friends to, uh, to let me know. But there's a few. Um, so that is kind of the ultimate challenge, getting them all in the base. And going beyond that, trying to get them in the base such that only the grid shows, no number side. Okay? It's a little easier if you can mix and match them uh, anyway, but still uh, not easy. And will provide a nice challenge. But for the younger crowd, let's say the uh, three to five year olds, one of the things they might do is simply identify the pieces by counting the grids. For example, what is this piece? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the answer is on the back. Okay, and of course you can do that with with uh, all the pieces. Uh, a little bit older, perhaps um, the uh, five to ten year old group. It is. Okay, um, how many total grids do we have? There's a number of ways going about to finding that. Um, if they could multiply, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then the grids across the bottom, which is 11 or 55. That uh, means that essentially, and you could find this manually, that the, adding the numbers 1 through 10, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, so forth, equals must equal 55 if this grid gets filled with all the pieces. So you might ask them, pick any number between, say, 11 and 55. Can you find the pieces that, that will add up to that number? For example, if the number was uh, 23. Can you pick out the pieces, this will be done outside the base, can you find the pieces where the numbers will add up to 23? And it's possible uh, to find every uh, number from 1 to 55. Of course, some of them, if it's a 1 or a 2 or, or 10 or less, it'll be just one piece, but all the others will be at least two pieces. And if you use all the pieces, it will add up to 55. So there's some interesting things there. I'm sure that you uh, homeschoolers, your educators, will probably find some other uses for this. I'd love to know them and share them um, with the community. Uh, if you people just like puzzles, it's a pretty good puzzle. Just sitting down trying to get all these in and, and um, it's pretty good. Um, and uh, uh, something that most people will enjoy. Um, it will. I will vary the woods a bit. These are nice hardwoods. This is a maple. They're a little bit, uh, a little more than a quarter inch thick. A beautiful lacquer finish. Um, everything is laser engraved on here. There's no ink, uh, no paints. Um, and I would will vary the woods. Primarily, we're using cherry, maple, and and some beetle kill pine. Here's a look with uh, cherry and uh, beetle kill pine, which which I like a lot. The beetle kill pine. Okay, I guess let's get upside down here. All right, um, this is Dave. These are made in our Hudson, Florida workshop. Thanks very much.